Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Get early access to all of our interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats with writer and comic book legend DG Chichester, new episodes of classic Capes and Lunatics shows, including The Quantum Zone, This That or the Third, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes, or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Jerry Conway, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics Podcast. I'm here for Peter. That's right, she is. All right, kids, welcome back to another fun filled episode of the Ultimate Spider Cast. I am Phil. Joining me, as always, it is that outlaw herself. Hello, freaking help right and so this time we're going to talk classic more classic issues just to drive both up the wall web of spider-man 49 and 50 <laughs> once i've been wanting to get to for a while and it's my first He's taking advantage of his birthday month guys i know see see justin steers into the skid looks like At least right. I was born this time for the issue we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, these were 89. All right, so, yes, like I, uh, I played in the intro, I believe 50 was written by Jerry Conway, but yeah, 49 was a Peter David. <laughs> uh, and you didn't get him on the phone? Shame on you. Who? <laughs> Peter David. I only talked to him once, you know, the, the, the classic when he called Charlie a dumbass. <laughs> I know, ah. but it's, isn't that the line somebody get Peter David on the phone? Yeah, except it's not Peter David. Who is it? David Walker. Oh, is it? My bad. Yeah. Long night. Sorry. I know she's drunk. Kids, no, I'm kidding. She's not. Get David no, my, Walker. My on cheat the day phone. is tomorrow, actually. Oh, oh, okay. Now it's all. I'm not gonna drink for you the whole year. Training for the marathon. Now it's. No, I told oh. you I have cheat days. Okay. <laughs> actually, I haven't Get drank on David my cheat Walker day because it was Lent. So, oh. Yeah, there we go. I don't know why I was thinking it was Peter David. This is like Bendis. All right. I, I've made my peace with Bendis. <laughs> I had that one. We had that one episode hey, on um, hey, Justice hey. Society. Oh, yeah. Hey, we made our. Hey, we. Oh, yeah, you vented. But we made our peace. He went away and we're fine with it. <laughs> yeah, he's not writing Superman anymore. So, you know, I don't have too much beef with him. I don't know if he's doing I'm even. I'm even advocating for him to come back to write Miles Morales. So, you know. Oh, my. <laughs> well. Miles needs him right now. I'm sorry. No, no, Tino shade to the person writing him right now, but I oh, feel like Cody's he's lost his identity mm-hmm. since coming into the 616, and we need to carve something definitive out. And who better but his creator to do that for him? I think it's, I, I, I think they're just trying to have juggle too many things where it's like, well, here's the Sony stuff, and, you know, but we want Miles to be his own, th- his own thing. And uh, we, well, we want Miles to be our own thing, but we're going to do like variations of Peter's stuff. And it's just like, uh, okay. That's why I, the the one thing I do like about Cody Ziegler is like I know he's like even created at least one or two like original villains. Original, yeah. yes, that's the most important thing to make him. And he, like I said, he's he's doing a good job, but like, yeah, maybe get some business consultation and like, hey, what do you think now that he's in the six one six permanently, and we're gonna bring Gwen into the six one six permanently? Like, yeah, you know, get thoughts. So, do you think do you think Marvel's like? I don't know, against bringing Bendis back because, I mean, we just got, like, the Legacy 300 issue and there was nothing Bendis in there, so I was just like... I, I don't... I, I think he still has good ties with them, honestly. Um, I just... I think they're just trying to give everybody a chance. I think they're just trying to give uh, all the other people a chance. Okay. That's true. Remember, you can always hire G- DG Chichester. Electra. Electra. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, that is what I'm manifesting right now. I was gonna say we do have a drop about him writing, uh, writing ninjas. If you're not DG Chichester, you can't write ninjas. I'm pretty bad if you forgot that one. <laughs> I never forget my own drops. I just heard the greatest drop ever. Who said it? I did. Your mother's a whore. <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, Nothing will ever be as good as Mephisto's mushrooms. Uh, 2025. <laughs> Oh, those are actually, uh, you know, it's not like I get piss tested for the marathon. Oh, okay, okay. 
So, yeah, let's just get into this yes. one. This one's actually pretty interesting. Oh, um, the first one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a good a good message. And two, again, we'll just get into the pettiness of Peter Parker. <laughs> yeah, good old Petty <laughs> Parker, yeah. Uh, especially when he's trying to show off for his lady. All right. All right, so yes, we'll start with a Web of Spider-Man number 49, cover date April 1989. Uh, corner Business. And as I said, writer Peter David, uh, penciler Val Merrick, inker... Oh, penciler and inker Val Merrick. I wasn't even paying attention to Get that. Get those shekels. Mm-hmm. Colorist Janice Cohen, letterer Rick Parker, and editor Jim Salicro. So yeah, this one's almost like a fill-in, but again, it's... Again, it's Peter David and and uh, I didn't think the art was bad at all. And again, I, oh no, not at all. Like I said, we'll get into the petty side of things, which is I, I, I like. All right, a drug dealer named Winston Shepard. Oh, well, that's a fancy name. Up in the chat, guys. Yeah, is waiting on his street corner for potential customers. Soon, a kid who's going through withdrawal comes to purchase some drugs. Unfortunately for the boy, he doesn't have enough money to buy more. Suddenly, Spider-Man arrives on the scene. He tells the kid to beat it and get some medical help for his addictions. He then webs up Shepard and dumps his drug supply. All the while, his camera is snapping photos of the encounter. Oh, yeah, because I got to get paid for it. <laughs> I'm doing a public service, but I got to get paid for it. You need the money. Gimme, gimme. Has he really come? He's just a poor kid. Leave him alone. Has, has he really come that far from that uh from that young that young boy, uh, 16 or 15, everyone, uh, uh, who tried to make it for, uh, famous, you know. He's who, a famous wrestler. Yeah. Who, who, who humiliated Crusher Hogan. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, yeah, so with Winston webbed up to a lamppost, I love this. The wall crawler swing. Uh, first, he swung him around the lamppost. The wall crawler swings away and recovers his camera. The drug dealer wonders what he ever did for Spider-Man to get on his case. The wall crawler doesn't respond, but he thinks about how he targeted this particular drug dealer because of his wife, Mary Jane. <gasps> My girl likes to party all the time, party all the time. <laughs> oh my. Uh, <laughs> Everyone loves cocaine. Uh, oh, come on. You got to bring out the puppet for that. Uh, okay. <laughs> what, I have to put his finger up into his nose, too? <laughs> Okay. I love how she's like, oh, you're doing using that puppet too much. She's like, gotta break the puppet up. All right. Everyone I don't care about cocaine. New Jersey. I hope it quakes <gasps> off, the earth, off the continental US. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love Jersey, actually. It's better than New York now. Man, I need a new drop. The views of Old Hellfire do not necessarily ex- are the express views of the Caves yeah. and Lunatics podcast network. Yeah, you you definitely need that. <laughs> I know. No, Charlie, God. Now you're the, the, you're the, the uh... <laughs> I'm a pinsleable. <laughs> You're the, you're the loose cannon now. <laughs> at least at least before you had an even looser cannon, but now no, now you're the loose cannon. Gotta gotta live up. To I'm uncancelable. Uh, all right. So, what was up with Mary Jane? It all started that morning when Mary Jane spotted her friend and fellow model Lorraine Mandel. Lorraine was with Winston and apologizes for blowing off Mary Jane for their lunch date. Lorraine makes up an excuse, and after introducing Mary Jane to Winston, she invites her friend up to her apartment. There, Mary Jane wonders where Lorraine has the energy to hustle like she does. Lorraine says she takes speed, but Mary Jane thinks she is joking. I think one of those. I swear it sounds like I, I swear I've heard this on an '80s sitcom somewhere, but which one was it? Probably all of them. The classic Saved by the Bell. Oh, tr- oh, the diet pill. <laughs> was that the diet pills? Or no, they were, they were caffeine pills. Hmm. There was, it's supposed to be heroin, but they changed it to caffeine. Caffeine pills, yes. A few minutes later, Mandel excuses herself to go to the bathroom. Suddenly, Mary Jane hears a crash from the bathroom and goes to see if Lorraine is okay. Seeing drugs on the floor, Mary Jane realizes that Lorraine wasn't joking about the drugs. Lorraine is feeling sick, and MJ suggests that they go to a hospital, but Lorraine refuses, telling her friend to bring her to bed instead. Whoa. <laughs> Chicka wah wah. Oh my. Meanwhile, <laughs> sounds like a little hard drive. Meanwhile, Peter Parker is meeting with Kate Cushing at the Daily Bugle, looking for a photo assignment. That's when the phone rings. Kate her. Cushing. <laughs> it's Mary Jane, and she tells him how Lorraine is in trouble, and he rushes out of the building, changing into Spider Man. Peter swings down to Lorraine's neighbor. I love that scene where she's, <laughs> Ma'am Chase, like I know he's in with that Ice Queen, Kate Cushing, and Kate Kate's the one on the phone. <laughs> 
Uh, he's like, oh, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> I'm trying to get work. Don't call it. <laughs> you never know this line's going to be bugged. Change- get it bugged. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Changing back into his civilian guys, Peter is soon in Lorraine's apartment. He and Mary Jane try to explain her- to her the dangers of doing drugs and, su- and suggest that she go to a drug rehabilitation program. Lorraine explains that she tried that already, but it was too expensive and didn't help. Ah, American healthcare. Actually, they don't even cover that. Um, you have to oh, get yeah. out of your pocket. Uh, well, no, I think there's one in Malibu. They do, but you have to be like rich and famous or something like that. Uh, uh, winning. Ex- yeah, the one that he went to. Yeah, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lorraine. Uh... When they suggest a state-run facility, Lorraine refuses this as well, saying it is pointless. Yeah. However, the Parkers refuse to give up and insist on getting her help. Outside of the bedroom, Mary Jane points out Lorraine's drug dealer from the window and tells him to go after the dealer as Spider-Man, as getting the police involved won't be a strong enough deterrent to get rid of the dough pusher. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a, that's a hell of a temptation. He's like right outside her apartment building. Uh, Peter caves in and leaves as Spider-Man intending to come back at night to give Winston a visit. Meanwhile, Mary Jane keeps trying to call various facilities to see if they can take Lorraine in, but the lines are all busy. Lorraine once more tells MJ to forget it. However, she refuses to give up on her friend and decides that they will show up in person the next day. Later, Peter returns to the Daily Bugle and pitches on an idea about tailing a drug dealer for a Bugle story. Kate thinks this would be dangerous, but tells him to get on it. This is what brought Spider-Man to the street corner to confront Winston that night. I know, she's like, it's dangerous, you could be killed. Ah, oh, do it. <laughs> Returning home, Peter discovers that Mary Jane is not home yet and calls Lorraine's house. She learns that Mary Jane is still there and had decided to stay the night to keep an eye on her friend. Peter tries to convince her that she can't force Lorraine to go to rehab. She has to want to go herself. Mary Jane tells him to worry tells him to wor- uh, worry about Winston while she deals with her friend. Peter explains that he gave Winston a good, scary Spider-Man, but also tagged him with a spider tracer so he can continue to harass him and force him to leave. Ah, the penny. Uh, The next day, Spider-Man finds Winston in the village trying to sell drugs once again. Uh, 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 Once again, Spider-Man catches him, discards his drugs, and warns him to get out of town. In a panic, Winston goes to a pay a pay phone because it's 1989. Kids, the call is. Supp- He's at a pay phone. I'm on a pay phone. Sal, he calls his supplier Sal, and then he needs to get more supply. Concerned that Spider-Man might follow Winston, he tells him to take the subway to the drop location, thinking that Spider-Man won't be able to follow him there. While at a rehab facility, Mary Jane is frustrated with the amount of time she and Lorraine have had to wait. They are told to fill out some paperwork and that there is a long list for treatment uh, that could take up to six months. Mary Jane is upset because Lorraine needs help right away. I'm... She needs her cash settlement and she needs it now. <laughs> oh, the general? Okay. <laughs> oh, Jim, l- wait, words. <gasps> Lilith's watching commercials. Oh, my God. <laughs> no, that that's a classic 90s commercial. Well, 2000s commercial. Every once in a while, you still see that. So. Usually in the middle of the night, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah with Shaq <laughs> uh, I, I know they didn't want like a quick fix story but I'm just like why couldn't Mary Jane just go to Bruce Batman my favorite character get her in one of the rich, uh, rich people she doesn't, she doesn't want to give up her billionaire you know Lorraine's a loose lady she- what oh jeez <laughs> <laughs> oh my okay oh uh, yeah Bruce is a whore that's right <laughs> go ahead throw it in all right. Uh, hold on, lost my place. It's, oh, here we go. Meanwhile, Winston arrives at the drop and recovers the drugs from a trash can. No sooner does he have it, Spider-Man gets the drop on him again and dumps the drugs. See how he he punches him into an alley, <laughs> knocks him around. Uh, no sooner does he have it. Uh, once more, Spider-Man warns the drug dealer to leave town. Getting desperate for money, Winston continues to try to sell his drugs, but Spider-Man is there every time, scaring away his customers. At the same time, Mary Jane and L- uh, Mary Jane and Lorraine go from facility to facility, finding that none of the free clinics have any room. Giving up on these, Mary Jane decides to take Lorraine to the Mount Vernon Drug Rehabilitation Center. 
There, they learn that they can't take Lorraine right away. However, she will have to be at the facility for 18 months, and it will cost a great deal of money. Since Lorraine allowed her health insurance to lapse, she gives up and storms out of the facility. Taking a cab, Mary Jane suggests that Lorraine get help from her parents. However, Lorraine explains that her parents didn't approve of her going to New York to become a model and is mortified about asking them for money. To what parent up. would? Especially in the 80s. Oh, yeah. New York was a cesspool. I mean, it's back to being a cesspool, but it was like really a bad place in the 80s. Mm. You became an after school special? Literally, bro. Yeah. So Mary Jane's uh, isn't ready to give up yet. In another cab nearby, Winston is having a cab driver zigzag across town in hopes he can lose Spider-Man and make some money. Later, Mary Jane drops Lorraine at home and tells her to hang tight before leaving. As soon as Mary Jane is gone, Lorraine decides to leave her apartment, unable to take her addictions anymore. Meanwhile, Spider-Man continues to track Winston throughout the city. Along the way, he worries that Mary Jane is going overboard trying to help Lorraine. In the warehouse district, Winston goes to the drug lab owned by Sal to ask for help. Sal is furious that Winston would come when Spider-Man has been following him all over the city. Drawing a gun, Sal shoots Winston. Hearing the gunshots from outside, Spider-Man realizes that he is too late and comes crashing through the window. Sal and his men begin opening fire on the wall crawler. At that moment, Mary Jane returns to Lorraine's, Lorraine's apartment with good news. She was able to get some people in the fashion industry to get the money together so she can get help. Ah, oh, see, she did go to Bruce. <laughs> fashion. Batman, my favorite character. Into the Dark Knight, all to do with Batman. Fashion. Uh, unfortunately, Lorraine is still gone, so Mary Jane decides to wait for her to come back. Back at the warehouse, Spider-Man easily knocks out Sal and his men. He then approaches Winston, who wants to know why the hero was harassing him. Spider-Man explains that he was after him for what he had done to Lorraine. Surprisingly, Winston doesn't know who Lorraine is and dies from his wounds. Although Winston won't hook anyone on drugs again, Spider-Man feels dirty about the whole ordeal. Still, he snaps the photos he needs for the Daily Bugle. Ah, yes, journalism. Yes. Oh my god, a few, like, like a month or two ago, they were talking on Howard Stern, oh my god, it was the creepiest thing, like, you know, like all the local news stations, you know, uh, I guess they have, like, an award show for, like, local news stations all over the country, but it's like, yeah. it's like, oh, you won this award for, you know, bus full of kids dies or something, you know, it's all, like, tragic stuff, and they're clapping and applauding when they win an award, and it's just, like, they were playing a montage of, like, all these, like, you know, horrific stories, and they're just cheering that they won the award for reporting it. It was creepy. Yeah, welcome to America, home no. of the dystopian, yellow journalism, sensationalist garbage. It's like, oh, family dies in fire, but hey, I won an award, maybe I'll get a raise. Huh. Getting the photos developed, Peter turns them into Kate Cushing, who is impressed by the whole series of photos. She thinks that the picture is a Pulitzer material. Peter isn't exactly pleased with the prospect. Going back to Lorraine's apartment, Peter finds Mary Jane standing outside in tears. She explains that Lorraine has, was found in an alley after having a drug overdose and she was rushed to the hospital. Although the doctors don't think her chances are very good, she tells Peter that she called Lorraine's parents and that they are coming out to look after her. Still, she feels like there was more she could have done. Soon, Peter and Mary Jane head to the, for the hospital to see Lorraine. Not long after they have left, the cab pulls up on a street corner and a new drug dealer gets out and begins working the corner just a vicious cycle because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i think mary jane even mentioned that before it's like oh yeah someone will probably take his place but you know just get rid of this guy and again i mean winston the ultimate scumbag drug dealer but again i love the pettiness just peter tormenting they're no super villain just peter tormenting him for the whole time Honestly, drug dealers and people like them are kind of the worst so oh yeah deserve it. that's why i said it's justified pettiness it is the best kind of pettiness i love what is that oh yeah page four where he just like webs into the lamppost and then he just like whoof, swings them around <laughs> basically playing bocce go, ball with up. him back up huh go go but yes uh I, I i'm reading these in the original uh floppies because for you you've let me down once again marvel limited because uh neither one of these <laughs> issues is on the app I'm like, I can see with other characters, but I'm like, why aren't you like, I mean, again, I know the intern has to scan them all in, Lilith, but I'm just like, again, anything Spider-Man, X-Men, Avengers, why is, why aren't we just making sure the whole catalog is there? 
I mean, it also takes time to have to find the right copies. I mean, this stuff wow. is old, and like they weren't thinking about digitizing ah, and true. preserving <laughs> for later and stuff. So I, I get it. I guess it is hard to just scan in the old stuff because again, we weren't thinking about this. Uh, but yeah, like I said, for a fill-in issue, again, it's uh, the story, the art. Uh, I enjoy this every time I read it. But again, it's like you know, uh, yeah, the drug dealer got his. <laughs> And Sal. And that, that's unrealistic, but I'm glad we had that ending. Well, again, I mean, <laughs> but again, it was it is kind of realistic because again, the drug dealer gets killed, but then again, another guy just takes his place at the uh, on the last page. That's un- unfortunately realistic. So, so you liked it? <laughs> yeah, it's a solid after school special. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, it may, must have made an impact on a eleven uh, year old me when I first read it. <laughs> Now the next one is truly great. Oh, really? I thought you'd be rolling yeah, your this eyes. One. Okay. No, this one's fun. Oh yes, we get the uh, we fi- we'll finally see how. Uh, we I get- like Silver Sable and I like Prowler. Yeah. And I, I, I don't mind Puma, and of course Rocket Racer. You know, Puma Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we finally get to see how Nick Katzenberg joined the bugle. <laughs> All right, so yes, Web of Spider-Man number 50 from May 1989, 1,000 words. Uh, again, this one written by a uh, friend of the show, Jerry, Jerry Conway. Uh, Lover of Bridges and Blondes. Oh! Jerry Conway. <laughs> oh, my. How many times he's probably heard that joke in his life? <laughs> uh, penciler, uh, Ray's favorite, Alex Seviolk. Seviolk. Inker Keith Williams, colors Bob Sharon, letter Rick Parker, and editor Jim Salakrup. The gang's all here. Oh my god. I, I, just look at the list of the characters. This is under the list of other characters. All the characters in this. Randy! Modern comics could never. Oh yeah, and the, the first wife who disappeared and we never hear from again. <laughs> I fear, you know, I, I, I picture she got out safely, but she was a blonde, so I don't know. I think a car went off a bridge. We just didn't see it happen. Oh, burn. <laughs> I'm, sur- I'm surprised in the ongoing Roberts and Tombstone Wars, she wasn't like a casualty or something. <laughs> uh, tabloid photographer Nick Katzenberg has come to the Daily Bugle to sell photos of Spider-Man appearing to rob a safe at the mansion of Winston Walker. Ah, Ill- alliteration. <laughs> Excelsior. Make the man proud. That's right. Jameson asks how he got these photos. Katzenberg, who takes photos for the National Examiner, was staking out Walker's residence when he spotted Spider-Man breaking into the mansion. After taking the photos, he decided they would be worth more uh, worth more his while to sell the photos to the Daily Bugle. When Jameson starts talking about payment, and Katzenberg only agrees to give him the photos if he is given a regular job at the Bugle, explaining that he has aspirations. Yeah, he's an aspiration, all right. More like just the ass, but whatever. Well, yeah, I was trying to be classy about it, Lil. Because that's what we're about here, classy. <laughs> I didn't get that memo, sir. Well, I know, neither did I. It was sarcasm. It was petty sarcasm. In a delightful mood, Jameson introduces Nick to Kate Cushing, and he heads out of the office. Passing Glory Grant and her boyfriend, Eduardo Luma. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> uh, you, come, you come back and, you come back and, he, Jameson's so happy he's like oh yes you come back and uh, visit us anytime hair young man <laughs> Gloria's surprised by Jonah's chipper mood <laughs> you have one of those returning to his apartment building Jonah wishes his wife Marla could be home to celebrate instead of being on a Marla. sabbatical oh my lord so he, he was so happy with these Spider-Man photos he was ready to celebrate with the wife <laughs> 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 It's, uh, it's aphrodisiac. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, Spider-Man's a villain. Circulation's going to go up, yes. Uh, uh, once, he's t- once he has taken the elevator up to his uh, apartment, he finds there's someone inside waiting for him. This intruder sprays Jonah in the face with knockout gas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man. Just what he gets. It was it was quick. He didn't have time to mutter at. Not in the face. Uh, see, not a little puppet. <laughs> hey, you're not on so... camera half the time. <laughs> uh, Good. Alcohol in one hand. Oh. Yeah. What were you gonna say? 
I said fair enough, fair enough. The following morning, the Daily Beagle was published with Katzenberg's photos on the front cover. The headline screams, Spider-Man thief? Question mark. Among those who... <laughs> so we don't get sued for libel. Among those who read this story are the Puma, the Rocket Racer, Willow the Wisp, the Prowler, and the Sandman. Their reactions range from interest to concern. Also reading the story is Winston Walker, who is furious to discover he was robbed from the newspaper. After berating his security team, he orders them to look around to see what else may have been stolen. However, Walker worries that his greatest secret may have been what Spider-Man was looking for. Oh. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. What, those, those terror quads of uh, porn? Oh, no, it's a little... It's not a secret. I know. My uh, NSA agent knows. <laughs> he's like, he's like, oh yes, I enjoy watching this. <laughs> While across the street from Winston's mansion, someone is watching and taking photos. While in Forest Hills, Christy Watson picks up. Oh the God, we're paper. back to this again. Oh, uh, again, <laughs> modern comics could never. How much? Are we, I know this issue's a little bigger. So but, much is happening. Oh my, so many characters. <laughs> I love it. She thinks about how she ran away from home in Indiana to come to New York so her cousin Mary Jane can help her become a model. Something that Mary Something, Jane is not yeah, aware of. I was going to say, uh, couldn't send a postcard first. Well, again, she knew she was going to say no. <laughs> she was disappointed when Mary Jane had her stay at Aunt May's house, but this changed when Peter and Mary Jane were evicted from their apartment and were forced to move in as well. <laughs> she then rushes upstairs to tell Peter and Mary Jane to tell them that breakfast is ready. Mary Jane is annoyed, but Peter tries to tell her to ease up on her cousin. However, Mary Jane is concerned about Christy as she feels as though there is something off about Christy and wishes she could get in touch with her parents. Peter is tired because, because he had a restless night and heads off for his class at Empire State University. It's hard to get it in when you got a, a minor and your aunt under the, under the same roof. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we see that toward the end here, yeah. Testy Pete. <laughs> Testy Pete is the worst Pete, honestly. <laughs> uh, uh, da, 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 da. When Mary Jane sits down for breakfast, she sees the front page story and wonders why he didn't tell her that story. Maybe because he was a silver sable. While at a federal court in Philadelphia... Joe Robertson is told to stop reading the newspaper by his son, Randy. <laughs> Randy? Randy is upset that his father doesn't seem to be doing anything to defend himself in his upcoming trial. His wife, Amanda, pulls Randy out of the meeting room and tells him that he is acting out of turn, reminding him that his father needs support, not criticism. <laughs> Randy's like, you're about to disappear. Randy understands, but he's... <laughs> <laughs> but he's afraid that if his father hey man so Sh Shashon has shown back up I mean we could have a man to show oh my god she's gonna broke up that wedding <laughs> what your father would rather you uh date a criminal than a white woman come on um, yikes again I'm surprised that they didn't cannon fought her I guess she just like, kind of disappeared she got lucky mm -hmm. she didn't end up in a fridge unless she <laughs> oh my god unless Zeb Will brings her, brings her back as something I don't know uh, oh, Goblin Queen 2.0? Oh, maybe. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Oh, God. Yeah, make her chasm. Be exactly. Give me back Ben Riley. <laughs> uh, gobble, gobble. Oh, I just had to hit the button. <laughs> oh, yeah, you did see that link I sent you that. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, Ze Zeb Wells is divorced now, so that it's kind of making sense. Uh, yeah, why he, a little he, bit. Why he, I, I told you, you got to check on your writer friends when you start noticing trends. So maybe that's why he's not in the mood to write a healthy relationship, you know? <laughs> See, I'm trying to be nice. Uh, Randy understands, but he's afraid that if his father ends up in prison, he may not make it out alive. Back in New York City, the Arranger is reading an article about the looming gang war. This does not bode well for the Arranger as the Lobos have been killing many of the Kingpin's top lieutenants. He soon arrives on the docks where yet another slaughter was committed by the Lobos. Written on the side of a ship in the in blood is the warning, Wolves Take Revenge. On the scene, Ow! <laughs> on the scene is Detective Frank Farrow and he begins berating the Arranger for even more deaths. It's then that the Arranger is told that there is... There is a call for him. 
The call is from Carlos Lobo, who warns the arrangement. The call is coming from inside the house. <laughs> the one who's not busy getting laid. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> who warns the arranger that he and his brother Eduardo are coming for his life. After he hangs up, Carlos and his brother Eduardo begin their next phase of the plan, which involves Eduardo romancing <laughs> Glory Grant to the point where she will do whatever he asks. Dickmatized! <laughs> okay, you have to listen to Capes and Lunatics episode 327 to get this joke. Yeah, she, he's about to give her the Loch Ness Monster. Uh damn free app keep jumping around or website keep jumping around <laughs> uh, while at the Simkarian embassy Silver Sable is in the middle of a training session when the phone rings it is her current employer who asks if she has seen the recent news she assures the caller that she is doing her job which, when she receives a message that gives her a lead while at Empire State University Peter has fallen asleep at his desk after three hours he's woken up by Dr. Swan and his assistant Anne Marie Baker Suddenly, it says Peter gets a message and rushes off. No, it's a beeper, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, it was absolutely a, a garage door opener, yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for them to be like, Miss Peter selling drugs on this side? <laughs> it's New York in the 80s, yeah. Right, and, he, you know, or either that or it's like, oh, does he have a, you know, so now they can beep him for uh, bugles, bugle jobs, but... Uh... Up on the roof, Peter changes into Spider-Man when he is suddenly ambushed by the Puma. <laughs> Spider-Man is surprised that Puma is attacking him since the mercenary owes him a debt of honor. However, the Puma explains that this th debt became null and void the moment that Spider-Man proved himself to be a common thief. During the battle, Spider-Man admits that he did break into Winston Walker's house but doesn't have time to explain himself. As the wall crawler flees, the Puma discovers that the hero dropped his mobile device. Yeah, Beaver. <laughs> that is that is that is generous to call it a mobile device. I know, I know. I'm like, is this being written? Is this summary bit? This, this is some this is some damn Gen Z not understanding. It's a millennial. Like, it's like, man, that's a weird. No, phone. I know what a pager is, babes. I know. It's those Gen Z. They don't have a clue. Mm. I had a pager. Me too. <laughs> Yeah, the, Turquoise. Yeah, yeah, Motorola. Yeah, the Russian find a payphone or something to call. <laughs> no, no, baby. I just had to find a payphone. No, no. Uh, uh, yeah, so he discovers the mobile device and figures he can use the resources of Fireheart Enterprises to analyze the device and get some answers. As Spider-Man swings across the city, he is unaware of a strange ball of light has started following him. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> uh. Meanwhile, the prowl great balls of fire. Get that check. Meanwhile, the prowler has arrived at Winston's home in order to find evidence that will clear Spider-Man of any wrongdoing. Sick. The rocket racer has the same idea, Sick. and seeing the prowler there assumes he's a criminal and attacks him. The prowler is surprised to hear that the racer knows Spider-Man, but the youth isn't interested in talking. The fight attracts the attention of the police, who rush to the scene of the battle. By this point, the Prowler and Rocket Racer realize that they're on the same side. When they are surrounded by the cops, the pair work together to get away. As they leave, they spot someone on the opposite rooftop taking photos. The pair ambush the photographer and learn that he is in the employ of Silver Sable and decide to pay her a visit. At that moment, Spider-Man follows the car owned by Winston across the Verrazano Narrow Bridge. As it turns out, Winston- Ah, 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 stand alive! <laughs> Long bridge. <laughs> no blondes on it at the moment. As it turns out, Winston had been under observation by Silver Sable, and Spider Man's theft was part of the mission. Thanks to a spider tracer, the wall crawler is able to follow the car all the all the way out to Staten Island. Eventually, Winston stops on a rural road and digs up a hidden safe. Looking inside, he is relieved to find that the documents he had stashed there are still intact. This is a hell little hellfire maneuver. Oh yeah, I gotta figure it out. Safe buried in a field somewhere, <laughs> or in a, or an underground uh, nu uh, nuclear bunker. Oh yeah. Uh, that's when Spider-Man reveals himself. He knocks out Winston's guards and takes the cylinder. However, before he can make a getaway, he is attacked by Willow the Wisp, who also believes that Spider-Man is a thief. I love all his, I love all these guys just automatically assume oh he's a thief. <laughs> Oh, that staying alive joke is actually about the movie where uh, there's somebody that uh, dies off a bridge and it's set in New York. Uh, okay. I think it is the Verrazano Bridge, too. I'm pretty sure. So that, that's what that joke was about. For those of us that aren't disco lovers. 
Bee Gees rock. I love the you Bee Gees. I love the Bee Gees. <laughs> oh my god, I love uh, Jimmy Fallon's impression. <laughs> <laughs> you ever watch that on Saturday Night Live? You can find the clips no. on YouTube, probably. Well, it's the Gibb Brothers, and it's Jimmy Fallon, and of course Justin Timberlake. Will Ferrell, Justin oh, Timberlake. Just to, oh. Yeah. Oh, no, I do know the one you're talking about. Yet. Yeah. Oh my God, I, I need a I need a Danielle drops. <laughs> Anytime I mention Justin Timberlake, what did you say? <laughs> uh, Almost as good as Dick in a Box, but not quite. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought you'd Works say on anything. multiple levels. I thought you, I never thought you didn't say anything was bit as good as dick in the box. <laughs> <laughs> I said almost. Okay, okay. There was nothing to get wet about anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, after dealing with the gunman, the wisp falls the wall crawler, but the hero tricks him into phasing through some power lines, giving wisp a powerful electrical jolt. As oh the wall- God. <laughs> The worst villain ever. Shocking. Man. Hey, that's that. That's for shocker. I know. Oh, stay tuned for this summer, kids. As the wall. Ah, <laughs> uh, wait for our cannon fodder summer, kids. Here on in on we are the night. <laughs> As the wall crawler flees the scene, Winston offers to pay Will of the Wisp for stopping Spider-Man. However, the Wisp refuses the money, intent to, on capturing Spider-Man as a matter of pride. Oh God, honor, pride. Oh that's Lord. It? Later, Silver Sable takes a boat to Ellis Island, where she meets with Spider-Man in the ruins of the old immigration facility. There, Spider-Man turns over the cylinder to Sable. They are interrupted by the Prowler and Rocket Racer, who is convinced that Spider-Man is a thief. However, before they can attack, they are ambushed by the Sandman. Spider-Man leaps in and tries to stop the trio from fighting, explaining that both he and Sandman are working for Silver Sable. Watching the battle, Silver Sable decides to take her lead. The inferior Sandman, by the way. Ooh, burn. <laughs> burn. Uh, as the cylinder is more important, and she is certain that the wall crawler and Sandman can sort out this situation. However, before she can get off the island, she is confronted by the Puma, who used Spider-Man's mobile de- mobile device to track Silver Sable down. I guess, well, I guess that's better than saying, oh, he tracked her by her beeper. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Puma orders her to stand down, but the female mer- mercenary refuses to surrender and attacks. Seeing that Sable is under attack, Spider-Man intervenes, telling Sable to run for it. As the wall crawler battles the Puma, the sand, the Sandman and the others come crashing out of the walls. Suddenly, Sp- Sa- no, Spider-Man is ambushed by Will of the Wisp. With the battle raging out of control, Spider-Man makes the ceiling uh, fall on the heads of their attackers. <laughs> When they pull themselves out of the rubble, Spider-Man hands over the cylinder to the Puma. Looking at the documents inside, the Puma is surprised to see that Winston Walker had been laundering money for the Magia. Two G's, kids. There's no F in that. <laughs> Why? Because Marvel's not effing with the ma- Mafia. <laughs> Silver Ex- Sable explains that the Justice Department hasn't been able to get anything incriminating on Winston, and so Silver Sable International was hired to find the evidence. The staged robbery was intended to trick Walker into revealing the secret location of his documents. With everything straightened out, Silver Sable's impressed by the work the others had done and hands them business cards saying she would like to hire them all on a freelance basis. Wouldn't funny if she would have handed your shekels. Wouldn't funny if she would have handed cards to everyone and be like, ah, not you, Wisp. <laughs> well, he's he's the most easily manipulated, so that's definitely who you want. That's true, and yeah, I mean, he actually, I mean. Maybe in the hands of a capable uh, mind, those powers might be good for something. <laughs> Soon everyone departs, leaving Spider-Man alone on Ellis Island. When everyone is gone, Spider-Man recovers his camera, intending to sell the photos to the Deal of Bugle and clear Spider-Man's name. However, <laughs> when Peter shows the photos to J. Jonah Jameson, he is furious that these pictures will exonerate Spider-Man and refuses to buy them. Oddly enough, Jameson sets off Peter's spider sense before leaving. We already covered that. Oh, yeah. Right. Scroll down, kids. Uh, before leaving, Peter's told to take pictures like Nick Katzenberg. Peter returns home where he crawls into bed with his wife, Mary Jane. Ah, well, at least this story is about to have a happy ending. Get it? We uh, get it, though. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, love. <laughs> sorry, love. <laughs> uh, he tells Mary Jane what happened and she tries to console him uh, they're interrupted by Aunt May who's come with some hot cocoa 
Mary Jane has made a knock next time and maybe becomes embarrassed because she realizes the couple were being intimate and bashful, bashfully leaves them alone. Wow. <laughs> uh, what a, uh... no. Sad whistle. Yeah, sad whistle. Or. Yeah. Sad whistle is actually reserved for Haley Osborne. <laughs> those, those cornbins. <laughs> Lastly, the man who appears to be J. Jonah Jameson returns to his apartment. Uh, he gloats about how taking the place of the Daily Bugle publisher is just the first phase of his plan to take down the United States government. Well, good luck to you, pal. In the bedroom, the real J. Jonah Jameson is tied to the bed and demands to be freed. The imposter assures Jonah that no one will see through his disguise. When Jameson asks who his kidnapper is, the phony Jameson suddenly shapeshifts into, into his true form as the chameleon. Ba, ba, ba. And again, well, yes, we cover the whole Get Lobo Brothers gang war. Scroll down, kids. Or the easiest place to find it, the Capes and Lunatics YouTube channel. There's a handy dandy playlist. Handy dandy playlist. Handy dandy playlist. Yes, that's right. All right, so, but little. Oh, yes, the, the debt of honor that Puma owes Spider-Man was from uh, Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man Annual Number 7, which we also covered. It was the honeymoon issue. Mm, yesterday, uh, Rocket Rachel went back to, gave up his identity for a while, and Peter Parker, the Spectacular Spider-Man 104, and Will of the Wisp uh, mentions how he made peace with Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man 235. All right, thoughts, Lil? <laughs> Uh, for it to start off with the Katzenberg uh, tagline, it's, uh, it's it turned out pretty good. Yes, yes. I thought you were going to... You gotta trust the process sometimes, you know? Again, again, yeah. Jerry Conway is a great writer. He knows what he's doing. Great 50th issue, actually. I love that it's like a, a thousand words is better than a picture because Peter takes pictures. Like, I, I like it. It was, it was kind of a clever title, too. Yes. It wasn't like just a punny business. <laughs> See, yes, yes. Again, great savvy art. <laughs> Great cover, actually. I really love that cover. I would uh, love to oh, have that as a poster. Yes. I would love to see that remade in foil, too, actually. <gasps> oh, or yeah. Particular or oh, something like that. Oh, come on, Marvel. That's what they should be doing. They should be remaking covers with, like, you know, cool and cool, like, 90s stuff. Exactly. I mean, they, we've been. Glow in the dark, velvet, something. We've been getting some shiny covers, but yeah, we need more. Man, that 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 uh that black armor one oh, is yeah. like one of the best best ones we've had in a exactly. while. Exactly, but yeah, no, do the foil. This this is what the thirty fifth anniversary of this. So yeah, come on, that'd be. I mean, it makes sense. Exactly, it, it kind of almost like with that cover that you have right there, it almost looks like that's what they were going for. Yeah, because it's kind of shiny, but yeah, it's it's not like foil; it's just paper. Yeah, yeah. We're demanding no choice. We're demanding you people come for our wallets. Come on. <laughs> Seriously, it's like if you're gonna give me some nostalgia, give me some good nostalgia. Especially again, let's get Peter and Mary Jane back together, and let's, you can give us all the fancy covers you want on those marriage issues. All right. Uh, yeah, any other thoughts on this? Again, there's so much going on in this issue. There's so much, but like it's like slice of life. Uh, we're like setting up stuff in the background. Like they just modern comics, honestly, could never. No, again, there's just so much going on here. Just that, and it, it just flows really well, and it's, you don't get bored. You know mm. what I mean? There's not a lot of dialogue. You know, like unnecessary dialogue. Exactly. Again, again, again. Jerry Conway is a master of his craft. And of course, the chameleon. <laughs> then there was the chameleon. All right. Uh, new issues? Let's do it. Alright, so I know this week, uh, I didn't get a ton of Spider-Man books this week, but, uh, Spider-Man Shadow of the Green Goblin number one came out, which, stay tuned, kids, we're gonna be talking to, uh, JMD Mateus himself about this on, uh, an upcoming Capes and Lunatics episode. Yes. Uh, this was good. Again, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a flashback. It's, uh, Peter Parker's only been Spider-Man for a few months in this. Everybody's got to go back to year one somehow. Yeah, uh, but again, I mean, I kind of like you know because Dimitris always like to do the, like the deep dives into people's like heads and stuff. And yeah, no, I would have been w more worried about a flashback like this if uh, if it wasn't Dimitris. But yeah, yeah, because again, we kind of get some Harry and Gwen too. But it's like I didn't know them yet. <laughs> uh, my only problem is again, I guess Dimitris is siding with the people who say he was fifteen. <laughs> I know. I was going to say, yeah. Yeah. Hey, are you feeling okay? I guess so. 
Gonna make it, buddy. Yeah. So yes, but yes, kids, stay tuned. Yeah, we're gonna go into this with Mr. Jam D. Mateus himself. Great art too. Oh, absolutely great art. Yeah. Uh, uh, the cover too, it's modern, but like gives like a yes. kind of like a classic cover feel to it. The they same do time. like the classic corner box and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, well, again, he's a fan of like the uh, like the Stanley Air and stuff. Yeah. So yes, kids, stay tuned for that. We're gonna get a whole. You're gonna get a whole episode with Mr. Jam D. Mateus himself. So yeah, I guess four is the uh, like the number now for miniseries because I know I like it used to be six. Now it's five. Now it's back to four. Yeah. I saw someone ask him online. It's like how many issues is this? He's like four. So that seems to be well, like like yeah, it's a mini. Um, that's a true miniseries is four. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, I mean that was a lot of them. Complete. In, a lot of them in the nineties were four. Yeah, that's. I mean, they're kind of going back to that nineties formula mm-hmm. for sure. Oh, are you reading? Are you reading the uh, Venom uh, Carnage crossover? I kind of have to. <laughs> I know I got it's real way sometimes, but I mean, yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's it's it, not bad. I mean, it's no King and Black, but it's not no. bad. But it, it could be way worse. But it, it's yeah, no, kind you know, Carnage invades the garden. <laughs> it was like it's like oh, there's all these versions of Eddie Brock I could blow up and kill. Poor Eddie. <laughs> so I'm assuming, I'm hoping, like at the end of this or soon after this we're maybe going to get a return to status quo maybe i think so i think so yeah although i mean i guess for blood hunt that's coming up uh yeah that symbiote doesn't want to cause anybody pain so i guess he's gonna uh that symbiote's gonna try to drive around lee price's corpse or bring him back to life i don't know probably bring him back to life a little more drama a little razzle dazzle oh yeah (laughs) or a little bit of both (laughs) Yeah, because I, I think that's, I think that's going to be going through every buddy's book is Blood Hunt. Mm, giggity, giggity. Oh, did you see? I mean, I'm I'm still trying to uh, nail down an interview with him. Uh, uh, Brian Brian Hill again. He's doing that Midnight Suns for that. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited for that. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, I was like, come on. Move I'm on. glad somebody remembers Midnight Suns. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know who remi- remembers that? T- uh, I just Jackson. hope it's it's the actual classic lineup and not the video game lineup. That's my only worry. Did it? I, I didn't check to see. I it. saw like an image. I mean, it might be a more classic lineup because I did see like Ghost Rider in there, and uh, I think was Blade in there. Uh, Blade's got to be in there. Yeah. Again, you got to have Ghost Rider. You got to have Blade. Uh, hold on. Looking this up. Blade. Yeah. I, I actually wouldn't mind Doctor Strange in this one. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. It looks like we're getting at least Doctor or, or um, Ghost Rider and Blade at least. Uh. Okay, I mean that's the foundation. Oh yeah. So you can kind of twiddle with the formula other ways, but those two are kind of like you have to. Uh, oh, uh, get two. It says two Ghost Riders. So I wonder if it's gonna be both. Uh, go two Ghost Riders, a Daywalker, their supernatural hunting friends, and a yeah. Okay, so I wonder if it's gonna be um, was it Night Stalkers or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it looks like they might be doing a more classic take. I think uh, Marvel might have heard that too. Hmm. Hmm. People keep asking for classic takes. Hmm. Get out of here. <laughs> because again, I guess the young kids aren't uh, sup- uh, throwing their money into the ring. Okay. Which is unfortunate, but so you pander to us. That's well, not unfortunate for us. It's good news for us, actually. Exactly. Exactly. And we demand more DG Chichester. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. I mean, you know how many problems so any anyway, problems we could wrap up. Just give DG Chichester the amazing Spider Man. <laughs> if he I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I, I mean I think writing Spider Man is has especially modern Spider Man has so many pressures and caveats, it's almost not worth it anymore. It's not it's yeah. almost not as prestigious as it is anymore I as guess. it used to be. But I just think one, he's a good writer too, but two, I think he, like he could get like the humor down and stuff too and Yeah, I I do miss a humorous Peter Parker. It's it's he's kind of in the in the Matt Murdock cycle of let's just yeah. trash him and break him down. And I'm like, babes, when has he been a whole person in the last 20 years? Honestly, if we're being honest, I'm just down to the point where I'm just like, you know what? Any writer who's not going to like flog him for every every other issue, yeah, no, it's it's yeah, I'm willing to give you a shot. <sighs> All right. Yeah, that's. I think that's the only Spider books I had this week. There was like a light week, Spider wise. Yeah, thank God my wallet couldn't take it this week. Honestly, DC no. was pretty big this week. I know, I know. Oh, um, did you read Deadpool? There's a new Deadpool out. Yeah, I read it. Yeah, that's but also by Cody Ziegler, who's writing uh, Miles Morales. So, what you think? I mean, 
I liked it better than the last run. It's kind of like a step in the right direction. I don't know if it's completely there yet. It's it's definitely uh, a fresh take, but we got to flesh it out a little bit more, I yes. think. Yes, yes. So, yeah, issue one was a solid starting point. I'm curious to see where it goes. And we should know by the first, at the end of issue three, so. Oh, yeah. Oh, and of course, I, I, I'm i sure you saw we're getting a uh, Deadpool Wolverine miniseries. This is, of, course, yeah, of course, of course. It, it wouldn't be Marvel if we didn't. Synergy. <laughs> Corporate synergy. Uh Oh, we, uh, and especially since they own them, they own them all now. They're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we're going to put out a miniseries. <laughs> That's not Fox anymore. I mean, it'll, it'll be, it'll, it'll be curious to see what that corporate synergy brings if it's actually truly better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But again, at least they'll be treating the characters like yeah, nice. Actually, and it, like, not, it, yeah, nicely. Yeah, they're not going to pull an X Men or Fantastic Four from when Fox had them, yeah. Yeah. At least they'll try. All right, Miss Hellfire. Oh, I I do want to encourage there there is a um trade of Deadpool the saga of Wade Wilson. The trade is out. Oh, so if you guys like Deadpool, since we kind of mentioned it, I would encourage you guys to pick that one up. It's pretty good. Yes, pretty solid. And for the, I was gonna say for those of you long time, the ghost there's Ghost Rider two out too by Jason Aaron Omnibus. So. Oh, okay, yeah, and it's hardcover, of course. So. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, so, but yes, all you long-term uh, Capes and Lunatics fans, yes, expect a Wade's World episode when that movie comes out. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, for those of you who've never heard of Wade's World, uh, just we like... have to do the original theme song where it was us singing it, though. Oh, uh, really? Wade's World, Fight Attack. Well, we, I mean, we could sing along with the um, actual theme song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, please. Gotta get back to our roots, Phil. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Yes, so keep that in your back pocket, kids. That's coming for you. It's way it's world. There's a taste. <laughs> There's a taste. <laughs> All right. Anything else? No, I think we can. Uh, we can wrap it up tonight. All right. So next episode, kids. Yes. Well, next two episodes, you're gonna be getting more '90s goodness. Next time, we're gonna cover Spectacular Spider-Man one. 55 and 156 uh yes joe robertson's in jail when they ask him and tombstone to break it out <laughs> breaking in and breaking out if you know what i mean whoa oh, oh uh he's breaking his face in guys come on don't be a pervert <laughs> yeah no it's in his prison purse oh it's <laughs> definitely in his prison purse whoa and then of course i'm uh in two weeks, I'm glad Lil Hellfire said she loves the Puma because we're going to cover Spectacular Spider-Man 171 and 172. Well, take, that's not bad. We're taking some peyote and sitting in a sweat lodge. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. That's relatable content for me. Speaking speaking of Demateus, I think that's a Demateus. So I forget. It's either Con. It's it's either Conway or Demateus. So. All right. Uh, and then of course we'll wrap up the month with a uh, Scarlet Spider with uh the Bad Babysitters Club. Yeah. Uh, Ray from Ray Plays Games and uh, the newly married Dave Finn. So. Was Chuck Dixon there? <laughs> I don't know. Was, was that his best man? <laughs> he couldn't oh, make. He couldn't make it to the best man. Was a uh, laptop on a Zoom call. Oh <laughs> uh, no! All right. Uh, so yes, kids. There, there's your uh, month. Send us your thoughts. Email us capesandlunatics at gmail dot com, or call the voicemail six one four three eight two two seven three seven. That's six one four thirty eight capes. And remember, you can find all things capes and lunatics episodes, social media, merchandise. Again, brand new merchandise uh, for all our new branding. Get your capes and lunatics, capes and lunatics sidekicks t shirts. Uh and of course, you can rain random money on us through the Cash App link, Little Hellfire's preferred method. Make it rain. And of course, the Patreon, where uh, you can catch me and Lilith talking different things besides comics, and it's completely uncensored, completely off the wall. So, and for a good time, uh, send us your thought. Uh, no, Grab sit. a snack and a drink. Whatever's in your cups, none of our business. And uh, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Whatever's in your snacks is none of our business. <laughs> <laughs> so find it all at tubespace.io slash capes or yeah tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network it's tubespace.io slash capes and lunatics podcast network more vicious and brutal than ever i love it i'm gonna eat this up with a fork and spoon 
All right, Miss Little Hellfire. You can find the old lady Hellfire on the Facebooks, correct? Yep. As long as she Bring has me, a phone. My phone with is her. found and uh, puppy pics incoming, and uh, yep. <laughs> See all her dogs, including the little a hole. <laughs> uh, and again, get uh, get yourself some uh, maybe maybe a little merch. Th- oh yes, get your merch. Uh, and again, maybe a little Hellfire will interact with you. Your whole family can suck it. <laughs> Get your head out of your butt, buddy. I'm I'm nicer on social media. Yeah, when she doesn't have to see her face, she's nicer. <laughs> uh, oh, you don't want to know the things I've done. Yes, I do. It's all rape and murder, I'll tell you that. Somebody's muffins getting buttered. That ain't my business. Oh, well, Peter and Mary Jane, we're trying. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, buffet? Oh, heavens. All right, kids, yes, come back next time. Spectacular Spider-Man 151 and 156, followed by Spectacular Spider-Man 171 and 172. And then we wrap up the month with Scarlet Spider, 17 through 19. But until then, swing on back. Flip, flip, flip it good. My heavens.